Hey everyone, my name is Rishabh and I'm a high school senior. I've worked multiple internships in my high school journey. And so I wanted to share the complete package and a full guide about how you guys can get internships as well. These are some of the names that I've worked with. I've done research and internships at these types of places, uh, my local universities, as well as some companies, as well as um, more formal research institutions. And so I feel like internships are just a great way to earn yourself some cash on the side, gain excellent job experience, a college apps boost. And if you're just working in an area that you're interested in, they're pretty fun overall too. And so in this first half of this video, I'm gonna tell you about how you can increase your chance of actually landing the internship. Uh, I'm gonna break down step-by-step step, like my cover letters, my CVs, what you need to include. And then second half, I'm gonna tell you about how you can actually find the internship in the first place, um, kind of what I did. And then finally, I'm gonna get into a continuation on how you can get STEM internships in research. And so like you might've seen this MIT name, I did that through a research program called the Research Science Institute. And so I'm gonna talk about how you can get into those types of programs as well. So first I wanted to talk about the cover letter. This is like a staple. It's so important for any job or interview because the the company needs to know your reason for wanting to learn and your drive for that area beyond just having grades or whatnot. And so this is my cover letter, let's analyze it. By the way, I'm gonna link the full templates for all of this in the description below. It's a download, so just go ahead and download the entire resource package for this video. But yeah, let me break this down for you. So it's really formal. I have my address, my phone number, my email, all that. Dear Internship Selection Committee, first paragraph is a hook, right? So you wanna hook them, they're reading some applications, yours wants to stand out. Now, I would not say um, this is the humble thing, the humble paragraph in this write-up, right? This is the paragraph where you actually kind of want to brag maybe a little bit to hook them in or tell about some story to hook them in. And so here I found the most effective way to catch their attention was literally just to name drop my achievements. And so I was like, whether it was being named America's top young scientist, okay, I mean, that's obviously like a flex, right? I'm not gonna go around on the street like when I'm interviewing for some job interview and be like, oh yeah, by the way, I was America's top young scientist. Like no, but I'm putting it in the cover letter because it's like a hook. And so they might remember my application and it like stands out to them. That's the only reason I did it. Right, so hook. Next paragraph, I talked about the skills I have. So I have data curation, problem solving, statistical analysis. Why? Because I was applying for those types of internships. Deep learning system, machine learning. I worked in MATLAB. I did bioinformatics and genomics work. Again, the skills that I was using for the internship I'm applying to. Then the next is if you're applying to a local job, a job in your local company, local area, right? then you're gonna to wanna to show some kind of community involvement as well. It's not necessary, but it can be, you know, it, it's, it's a decent thing to say. And the reason why I did it is because I was applying for like a science type internship. And so it just made perfect sense that I give back to my community in science as well. And that shows that I'm a leader. I can work on, in, and collaborate with a team and also direct a team and direct my own project through an internship. And then finally, I just name drop my GPA or like drop my GPA just academically so they know where I'm standing and so they know they can trust that I've, you know, excelled in my high school courses. And so the next thing you want to do is make a killer CV. A CV is curriculum vitae. And so it's like basically a resume if you don't know what it is. But this is really, really important. Why? We're, we're literally high schoolers, bro. Okay. What I mean by this is we don't have a PhD in mechanical engineering. We don't have a job at Google yet. And so we can't can't say that to get jobs or internships. Instead, we need to use ECs to make up for our lack of this stuff. ECs are extracurriculars or activities. And so we need a list that, hey, I volunteered for my parents' um, business, or like I, I helped out over the summer with my parents' business and I learned how to use Microsoft Excel, Word, blah, blah, blah. I was also serving as the community chapter of my dog help center. And so I learned how to write emails and all this stuff, right? So you're gonna list all of your extracurricular activities in your CV to make up for that. Obviously, when you're like 30 years old, you're applying to a job at Google, I don't know, whatever, this is a random example, you're not gonna be listing that like, hey, in my free time, I like necessarily volunteer for a dog thing. You're just gonna list a one page thing that I worked at these companies, I got my degree from this place, I had like summa cum laude, GPA, whatever, right? But 
for high schoolers, we need those activities. Now let's get into something like that's actually juicy and important, which is the interview. You guys can figure out the CV and like other stuff. I'll give my templates again, but like I'm pretty sure you guys can figure that out, personalize it for yourself. But for the interview, this is something that's actually really, really important. Um, let's say we have student number A who has a 4.6 GPA and their parents forced them to go sit in the interview. And now in the interview, they're like, yeah, I've had a really big interest in uh, marketing since I was five years old. My parents gave me this thing and then I worked on it and blah, blah, blah. Versus student B who has a lower GPA, less experience working, but who's like genuinely interested in the thing and their parents didn't force them to sit down in the interview. They genuinely want the, the job and they want the internship. And so the company might actually choose the student who has less experience already because they will grow more through the internship. They will get more stuff done because they're actually excited about learning and working in the field. At the same time, a lot of these internships that like local businesses will do, right? They're trying to recruit for future jobs. Like they're, they're trying to get you like after college or after high school or whatever to like come work for their company or they're just trying to give back to their community. And so showing like yourself as a person is also really important in that regard because at the end of the day, your interviewer is also a person. They're a human being. They're not like a robot that's just looking for the best stats, right? So show yourself like just like you might do for college applications, whatever. Now, onto some actionable stuff, like stuff you can do right now. Um, showcase on GitHub, Dribble, portfolios, stuff like that. So if you work in design or creative, artwork, those types of things, Dribble is an excellent site for you to host a portfolio. Videography, social media, link your social media stuff if you're like applying for an internship in that area, like your Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, show you have experience. Coding or software, GitHub, I mean, you guys will already know what GitHub is. Um, business or anything else, portfolio websites. And so this is in general, um, this is my portfolio website. I, I don't really have this super public, but I thought I'd share it because it might come in handy for a lot of you. And so basically I took a template for like this portfolio website, cloned it, and then I, I, I changed it with my stuff. So about page, just who I am, this is who I am. Uh, it does not have to be like, I, I was, I, I, I'm just gonna be honest, like I sweated in high school, so I have tons of like awards and stuff, science competitions I participated in. So I listed all that, it does not have to be that extensive. Um, so yeah, you don't need like an honors page, right? Make a page for your CV, make a page for like about general, like who you are, and then make a page maybe for your like ECs and projects and like stuff you do in your free time. And that's it, that's all you need, like a contact page, that's it. I have these like extra tabs and whatnot. Um, I think this page is pretty important, so I'll just talk about this for like 10 seconds. Basically here I listed like all my projects, so not only my research projects, like the papers for those that I did, or like articles for those, but also then my apps that I built in my free time. So people can kind of check those out and see like my experiences that, oh, he also does like coding, just general like portfolio type thing. Okay, hopefully that was a little bit helpful. Now let's get into the next thing, which is LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is arguably more important than the portfolio thing because you can link your LinkedIn and your email in your CV itself really, um, and your people might look you up on LinkedIn and you can request them as well, right, to, follow, to connect with you on LinkedIn. And so basically LinkedIn is this website where you get to flex about yourself so you can get job opportunities. Um, mine is not perfect, but I've been revising it several times throughout high school and so mine's like a legitimate kind of thing you would expect from another high schooler. So don't look at like Bill Gates's LinkedIn, like look at mine and I'll have a link in the description below. So make a LinkedIn, use mine for inspiration. Now let's move on to the next part, which is to email nicely. And so we want to be professional. You know, the company might have, if, especially if you're applying for like one that's traditionally undergraduate, graduate level workers, right? You're a high schooler and so they're going to be like, is this person mature enough? So be as professional as you can in your emails, like be really kind. And so one easiest thing you can do is create an email signature. Use the Georgia font in Gmail. It just like makes you look professional for whatever reason. Link your website, like best regards, Rishabh Jain, Rishabh Jain on me. Like, I don't know guys, I, I just find that kind of clean professional. All right, now let's get into how you can actually score the internships in the first place. So number one, let's look at this. How to get internship in high school. If you search this up, Google shows you an info box with tons of internships in your local area. Wow, that is kind of helpful, right? So this is one way, use Google. Let's go into the next. The next way is LinkedIn. 
Again, make the LinkedIn profile, go to the jobs tab, and it's gonna suggest you stuff based off of your profile. So I did machine learning skills in my profile, and so it's suggesting me to work at Dropbox. All right, next strategy is to apply for STEM research programs and opportunities. And so I made an entire video about formal programs in STEM that you can apply to and how you can score those and like cold email for professors and tons of more information. And so go watch this video on the screen now. That's gonna tell you all about that. It's basically like a part two to this video. So go click on that. Also, if I earned your subscription, please subscribe below, leave a comment and bye. I'll see you next time.